You're most welcome this afternoon to this service of baptism. Bear with me one moment. That should be a bit better. Yes, I think you can hear me better now, can't you? Yes. You're welcome to this service on Trinity Sunday, the 30th of May here in Stranola. And we welcome the Riley family for the baptism of Bobby uh, as we gather together here in person. And those of you who are joining us on Facebook, on YouTube and dial a phone service in these continuing most unusual of times. Uh, for those of you here in the church, and if you want to follow it at home, any of our notices are on the notice sheet. And for those who are joining us digitally, you can find that on our website, stranoller.refo.anglican.org. But there's not too many notices because like with everything else, many of the things haven't really started and are not able to happen as yet. But just to mention that the midweek Bible group is continuing on Wednesday the 9th, which is a couple of weeks' time. It's great that the Son has also agreed to join us this lovely day as well. We begin our service, as we always do, with an opening prayer and putting ourselves right with God. Gracious Father, bring your blessing into this meeting of your people gathered here today. Speak to our hearts through the hymns, the prayers that are said, and the reading and the understanding of your word. Close your eyes to my sins and wipe out all my evil. Create a pure heart in me, O God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. As we say sorry to God, we, say, we recall that and ask, do not banish me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. That's from Sam. 119. And our parts we say together are in the yellow type. Let us return to the Lord and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. From Luke chapter 15. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins and open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have our first hymn, and if you please stand for the hymn, although we cannot yet sing, we can enjoy the music from Holy Trinity Tomorrow. Please stand.
And this is a new hymn or song to some of you, but very appropriate for today's baptism. Almighty God, you call your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the collect for this Sunday, Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore to be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll remain seated today for the psalm. 
we begin with the response part. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters, and the voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedar of Lebanon. He makes the Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord spits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Amen. Please remain seated for our reading from John's Gospel, please. A reading from the Gospel of according to John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after growing old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I pray, Lord, as we now turn to your word, would you give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and most especially hearts to respond, that you would speak to us, challenge us, and call us back to yourself, Jesus and Father, and Spirit. Amen. We have what might appear an unusual, I think I'll stay at the lectern, it's easier to hear me. We have what might appear an unusual passage to some. Nicodemus, one of the teachers of the law, who is versed in the Torah and the books of the Bible, of what we would now call the Old Testament, and in the ways of the Jewish faith, 
and is to teach others in the Jewish faith, comes to Jesus. And he obviously recognizes that Jesus is special and wants to learn from him, realizing that while he should be knowledgeable in the ways of God, he is missing out on something. And Jesus said to him, you must be born with above, born again. That's where we get the phrase from. And Nicodemus is taking it on the one hand too literally and on the other hand, failing to see what Jesus is saying. Hence the challenge of Jesus. If I tell you things plainly and you do not understand, how can you understand if I were to tell you things of heaven? I know for myself that I had to come to a similar place to Nicodemus, be born again, because I knew of the existence of God and I knew the reality of God, but I didn't actually have a personal faith and a personal acceptance of God. It was more a concept rather than a reality. It could be said to move from head to heart. And that's what Jesus is challenging Nicodemus and all those who listen in on this scene must do. We must say that yes to Jesus and yes to God. And then Jesus goes on to explain why and how that must be. He says, the son of man must be lifted up. that Whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And I think Nicodemus was challenged, but Jesus brought him back to what he would know, because remember for him, the first five books of the law, and especially Moses, were especially important to him. And many of you will be familiar with the signs, and many chemists on the signs and outside, you'll see a snake on a pole, and that's in relation to Moses. And the snake was looked, lifted up, and all who looked on it saw healing. And Jesus is drawing an analogy to that for Nicodemus and for us, that as Jesus was lifted up, in this case on the cross, all who look and turn and accept him can receive healing. Healing from the brokenness in our own lives, but healing in the brokenness in the whole of creation of which we are part. We have all turned away from God and gone our own ways. And Jesus, God, especially through Jesus, calls us back to him. And that is why the cross is so important. Because Nicodemus would have been familiar with the Old Testament, the then Testament as it would be then, of the sacrifice of animals. The blood of the animals was shed in the place of our or their blood, human blood, so that the sacrifice would be made as an atonement, a cleansing from sins. Because God is pure and holy and perfect, and let's be honest, we as human beings are less pure and less holy as God hopes and desires us to be. It's not that God needs this for his own ego or for own benefit. God is God. He knows who whom he is and of what he is. It's more that we need to learn and know more of him. That's in that light and in that context that perhaps one of the best known passages of the Bible we get. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In a few moments, we'll be asking the family, parents, and godparents to accept Jesus and what Jesus has done and to accept Jesus' ways. Jesus said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's why I find uh, Frank Sinatra's song so challenging in a negative way. I did it my way. Um, it challenges us to do it Jesus' way and go in his ways. You'll be familiar with the poem, The Footprints. Um, and that is especially helpful. It reminds us of going in the ways of Jesus. And it reminds us that Jesus is carrying us through challenging times and in his way. And he is the truth. In the world where truth may be said to be relative, and it's very challenging in today's worldview, actually Jesus says he is the truth. And he challenges us about our nature and our ways, even when we don't wish to hear it. And he calls us to be better than we already are. But he does this not just for one or two people. He does it for all people and not just for individuals. Remember, it says, for God so loved the whole world. And one of the challenges and I think unfortunate parts of culture in today's world is that in the Western world, we're so individualistic. Nicodemus would have understood of being belonging more closely to a family, not just a biological family, but the family of Israel. Remember, they are derived from the 12 tribes. And we sometimes lose out on that understanding of belonging to the family of the church, which we'll welcome little Bobby into in a bit. And we're the body of people 
The word church comes from Ecclesia, the gathered family or body of God. So may we have a renewed sense of belonging to God, of a family together, and know that we're healed, helped, and hoped through Jesus. So now that leads me to the signs of baptism, which is very helpful. And I didn't design it because the readings were not picked by me because they're the lectionary readings, but it fits so well with the signs of baptism. These are like signposts because Bobby is a little bit too young, I think he'll agree, to begin his journey of faith entirely on his own, which is why his parents and godparents are here and why we as a church are here to help him on that journey. So this is the first of the signs for that journey. Water. Water reminds us of life because you might get by a good few days without food, but you wouldn't get by too well without water. And in reality, our lives are not whole or complete or well actually without God. So we need him for our lives to be whole. And water reminds us of cleanliness. And again, I know the Bible says this many times, but unfortunately it's true. We need to be washed and made clean. That's why this, these robes were picked many years ago. The black reminds us of us without God and the white, the purity of putting on God. The Bible speaks about being clothed with Christ. And any of you who do the washing regularly will know how difficult it is to keep white clean without any blemishes, hence the image. And we come to the second sign, the sign of the cross that I'll make on the head, forehead of Bobby. And that reminds him, might be a bit young, but we can remind him later when he's a bit older, that he was claimed by Christ and that we were claimed by Christ. And that the one who was pure took the punishment of us, even though we didn't have to. It should have been us there, but he took our place so that we can be cleansed and made whole. But the cross, unlike Jesus Christ Superstar, if you've ever seen that, the cross doesn't just stop at the cross. The resurrection is needed. It means that God has dealt with it. The old is gone and the new has come. And if you're familiar with the Bible passage, there's a little bit there that says an awful lot that when uh, it, Jesus said it is finished, the curtain of the temple tore from the top to the bottom. So only the high priest was allowed into the presence of God. That was opened up and we're allowed into the presence of God. And that's very appropriate for today because it's Trinity Sunday. We think of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On other occasions, I've used Rublev's icon. You can go and have a look, Google it if you like. And that you have a table, and you have the fa you have the Son at the right hand, you have the Spirit, you have the Father, but there's a gap in the middle. And that's for us to be part of the fellowship and friendship with God. And now we have the last, but by no means least, the candle. Oops, we've jumped ahead of ourselves. I shall go back to that. The candle reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. I said on a few occasions that Jesus was probably not born on the 25th of December. He was probably born in March or April. Yet, a bit like the Queen in England, he got an official birthday. So why did they pick that day? Well, it's very close to the long, shortest day and the longest night, the darkest time of the year. The Prince of Light and the light shines all the brighter in the darker times. And Bobby's only just begun his journey of life and faith, and we hope that he'll have no obstacles, but we know that life isn't always like that. And we pray that he'll have the light of Christ, giving him comfort, direction, and to see which way to go. And that's why we use the candle at baptism. So in the light of all of this, and in the light of... Um, Nicodemus having to make that response. I now have a chance for us to make that response. So there's the first part we say together in yellow, a moment of pause, and then another part. But this is our chance, like Nicodemus, to take on board and to accept for ourselves from head to heart that being born again out for the Spirit. Because Jesus said to us that everyone who says yes to him will receive the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I am, let us, if you wish, say together the yellow type. Lord Jesus, I am sorry for the things I have done wrong in my life. Please forgive me. I now turn from everything that I know is wrong. 
Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. I now receive that gift. Please come into my life by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I now come to the baptism part. I'm going to move forward so that I can see the family and they can see me. Can the baptism family please stand? So your part is in the, the green type. So together we say, we present Bobby to be baptized. This is where you make the, the promises to journey with Bobby in the journey of faith. Parents and godparents, will you accept the responsibility praise for you in bringing Bobby for baptism and answer on his behalf? By your own prayers and example, by your teaching and love, Will you encourage him in the life and the faith of the Christian community? With the help of God, we will. In baptism, this child begins his journey in faith. You speak for him today. Will you take care for him and help him to take his place within the life and the worship of Christ Church? With the help of God, we will. These are the hard decisions to go in the way, the truth, and the life. In baptism, God calls us from, the, his, from darkness to his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask you to reject the devil and all proud rebellion against God. I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? I repent of them. You turn to Christ as Savior. I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life? I come to Christ. This is where we respond and support the family together. It should be in yellow, but it's actually in green, your part at the bottom. We have heard these, our brothers and sisters, respond to Christ. Will you support them in this calling? We will, we will support them. So the family would like to come forward because we're now, uh, if you could bring the water with you as well, that'd be great. And the cotton buds. Family, if you can come this side, and my godparents, if you can this side, it would be all great. Okay. And I'll get the flask of you when I'm ready, okay? Okay. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water to sustain, refresh, and cleanse all life. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. In water, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit, the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us from the death of sin to newness of life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism in it we're buried with Christ, in his death, by it we share his resurrection, and through it we were born by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience of your Son, we baptize into his fellowship those who come to him in faith. Now sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit, that he may be cleansed from sin and born again, renewed in your image, that he may walk by the light of faith and continue forever the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Can I ask the whole congregation to stand, because we make our promises as the family have done already. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord 
who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he'll come again to judge the living and the dead. If you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it's Bobby George, isn't it? Yeah. Are you ready, Bobby? Yes, it is my face underneath there. So if you could hold him and then. Oh, right. Put this down. No, that wouldn't get worse. I baptize you, Bobby George, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oops, there you go. Now you can hold him up again. That wasn't so bad, was it? Now. That was a bit of a shock, wasn't it? Well, we still didn't cry, that's the main thing. Now have that cotton bud, please. Thank you. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Yep. Live as a disciple of Christ. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. Finish. Keep the faith. Confess Christ, confess Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection. And look for the coming of his glory. Yep. <laughs> I can't give you a hand, unfortunately. I think a round of applause are needed, aren't they? <laughs> God has called you into his church and say together, we therefore receive and welcome you with us as a member of the body of Christ, as a child of one heavenly father and inheritor of the kingdom of God. Amen. I know you want to have control, don't you? You want to control the service. We are the body of Christ by one spirit. We're all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Can we do an elbow bump? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. You can go and sit down, please. Perfect, thank you. He wants you to see his adoring public again. Let us continue in prayer, please. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, in the knowledge of all that you have done for us, as we bring our, you our concerns for the church for the world and for ourselves, as we seek to renew our commitment to you as our Lord and Savior. Father, we bring before you your worldwide church. May its members be committed to live in such ways that by their actions and words, others will see and understand the saving grace of Jesus and want to follow in his way. We pray for Christians in many countries of the world who suffer persecution because they refuse to abandon their faith in the one true God. Today, we pray especially for the Anglican Church in Mexico, where many risk their lives and the lives of their loved ones to follow Jesus. Lord, provide safe places and homes for believers who are expelled from their families and communities for choosing to follow you. Give strength, we pray, to those who preach and teach the gospel and seek to bring the, your, the light of your word into the dark places of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for Bishop Andrew, Reverend Adam, and the clergy you have called to serve you in our diocese. 
help us to realize the importance of regularly bringing our clergy and diocesan lay readers to God in prayer as they carry out their ministry. Today, we pray in particular for the congregations of the parishes of Kilcronahan, Balnes Green, and Six Towns, and their rector, Reverend Rosemary Diffin. Lord God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, give to all who preach and teach your word the gift of spiritual wisdom and discernment. We pray for ourselves. Loving Father, you are gracious and full of mercy. Thank you that as Jesus paid the penalty for our sins with his own death, you offer us love, forgiveness, and restoration. Thank you that you have promised that if we confess our sins, you are faithful to forgive us and make us right with you again. Guide the hearts of all who are searching for the truth of the gospel. We pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, they will have the strength of faith to turn from their sins, be drafted into the fellowship with all who believe in Jesus and live a life that is holy and pleasing to you. May we, united with them, become a people willing to serve you and one another in genuine love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of priests, we pray for a world that is divided by strife and friction, by war and terrorism, and by man's inhumanity to one another. Bring peace to all those troubled parts of your world. We pray especially for the continuation of the present ceasefire between Israel and Palestine, and for all who are endeavoring to negotiate a settlement with both sides. We pray for other countries in the Middle East, in Africa, and throughout the world where men of violence seek to impose their will on others. Give to the leaders of the nations wisdom and judgment, courage and determined, determination to seek peace and reconciliation in every troubled part of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, thank you for the communities you have placed us in. Lord, you command us to love you and to love our neighbor as ourselves. May this love begin in our homes, bringing healing where there is brokenness, understanding where there is frustration, joy where there is sadness, and hope where there is despair. Help us to witness your love through the way we relate to all those we encounter on the daily course of our life's journey. Lord God, thank you for the joy we share to get today as we welcome Bobby into your church family. We pray for his parents, Robert and Jennifer, his godparents, Lorna and Richard, May your loving presence in their lives this day encourage them to deepen their relationship with you as they guide Bobby through his life of faith. And Lord, keep us faithful to the promises we have made to pray for them. We pray for Bobby and for opportunities to journey with him as he grows in faith. Help us to be a prayerful support. And as he grows older, Lord, give him a heart for your word and for your ways. May every gift and ability you have blessed him with grow, develop, and flourish to bring you glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing, Lord, comfort the sick and suffering with your living presence through the power of the Holy Spirit. We bring to you, Lord, those whom we know who are ill or suffering in any way, for those in chronic pain and distress, for those who are terminally ill, for those who are lonely, and for those with mental health issues. We pray that your loving and healing presence will surround all who are suffering and that your Holy Spirit will comfort and uphold them. Loving Lord, we thank you for all who work to improve care and treatment of those who are physically or mentally distressed. We ask your blessing on nurses and doctors and healthcare workers. Lord, guard and guide them as they survive, strive to provide care for their patients while greatly hindered following the cyber attack on the HSE. Shield, protect and sustain them and all hospital and healthcare support staff in the coming weeks 
as this situation is resolved. Lord, we bring before you, uh, for a, we take a moment, Lord, to bring before you in silent prayer those known to us who are unwell at present as we continue to pay, pray for Jim Riley and James Leeper and also for others known to us in the wider community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, your word tells us that all who come to you in repentance and faith can look forward to a day when your kingdom shall come, a time when there will be no more death or sorrow and every tear will be wiped from our eyes. Loving Lord, look with compassion on those who are mourning the loss of a loved one today. We pray for the Hanlon family following Jean's death. We thank you for her faithful and dedicated service to this parish and to Mother's Union over her lifetime, for her goodness and generosity and all that she did. Lord, we ask that you would be with the family in their grief and provide the comfort they need to come to terms with all that has happened. Lord, draw them and all who mourn ever closer into your everlasting arms of love and compassion. And may we continue to prayerfully support them in the difficult days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, as we begin a new week and having heard the message of the gospel, we pray for God's strength and the guidance of the Holy Spirit to go out into our community as ambassadors for Christ revealing your love to all who we meet in the course of our daily lives. This and all our prayers we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We draw our prayers together and to close, we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Can you please stand for our final hymn to stay? <laughs>
service draws towards a close. The God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Can I ask either mom or dad, whoever hasn't got the little one at the moment, to come up? I'm going to give you a, a candle, please. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and given us a place with the saints in light. You receive the light of Christ. Walk in the light of all the days of your life, we say together. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. So as we go and depart, I leave you with the Irish blessing sung by the Irish churches based on St. Patrick's Blessed Faith and uh, the ancient Irish hymn as well. Please be seated and you'll be directed out. Thank you.
Christ be with you. Christ be in you. Christ be high.